Black People Month. Let's get it. And what better way to start than one of the most recognized black men in the Bible, Simon of Cyrene. When it comes to portrayal of ethnicity in biblical media or ancient or old illustrations, it's no surprise to anybody that it's predominantly white. And to be fair, I ain't mad at it, but that don't mean I gotta like it. I know it's just a result of how history unfolded. And honestly, for Christianity to get as big as it is today, it was necessary to go down that Greek Roman Catholicism route that basically shaped the Christian world as we know it. But even the illustrations of the ancient Egyptians are like this. But Jesus probably being the worst example of all. Just because it makes you feel uncomfortable doesn't mean it has to change. You know, I mean, Jesus yeah. was a white man too. Can I laugh in your face? But you know, I can't even get too mad at her. And I'll tell you why. White. White, 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 mm, hold on. White, 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 what, wait, hold up. Huh? Uh-huh. What was I saying? Oh yeah, so the interesting thing about Simon of Cyrene when it comes to portrayals, it's interesting because despite history being played out and being represented as it is, Simon is one of the characters that almost always remains black. Almost always. Am I alone in this? I didn't know y'all noticed he was white. Even in a time where colorism and racism was at an all time high and black people never got the representation that they needed. Even today, sometimes black people don't even get the representation. And these are places where there should have been representation. <laughs> I want Moses and his family dead. This is disgusting. This is awful in every way. And yet my man Simon stays chocolate every time. Every, every time. time. And listen, Simon better get the same treatment in the Chosen TV series. And I don't want him tanned or mocha. I want him midnight smooth. I want to be able to turn off the lights and not know where he is. <laughs> you hear me, Dallas? Blah, blah, blah. I mean it. Joking aside, Simon was from Cyrene, which is in North Africa and is modern day living. And what's told about him, according to the Gospels, is that he was coming from out of town and he was passing by as Jesus was getting car carrying the cross and randomly got selected by one of the Romans to help Jesus carry the cross. And, uh... Yeah, that's it. I mean, there are certain theories about why he was important in this whole scenario. Because, um, I mean, in Mark 15, 21, why would Mark specifically say he's the, he's the father of two random dudes who we don't know? Like, come on, bro. Come on. I know what you're doing. There are other theories that say he's one of the men in Acts of the Men of Cyrene, or he inspired them, or he had something to do with them. I believe it's Acts... Hold on. Acts 11.20. I was right. Like, I always am. I'm kidding. That was a joke. But theological canon theories is not why I want to talk about Simon here with you today. What I want to theorize and reflect on is what this man was thinking during this entire process. And so I came up with three things that he might be thinking of, which may be common knowledge to some, but common knowledge isn't always common. So either he didn't want to be there and wanted no part in it, or he was conflicted, but he helped curiously, or he wanted to help straight up right off the bat, which is, I guess, the most common portrayal. To be honest, I'm betting on the second one. I think Simon was more shocked and curious than anything else. Like, I mean, imagine if you were on the street and you were watching something, you know, this insane and one of the random authorities ask you to look up, to help this man walk or get where he needs to be. You know, on one hand, you probably wouldn't want to do that because I mean, if, especially if they're saying this man is a criminal. But at the same time, the more time 
you spend walking with this criminal and the more time you help him, you start to realize there may be some other stuff going on. Here. And I'm also betting on the second one because it's probably how we came to maybe follow Christ. I mean, I don't know. The story kind of sets itself up like it was it, like it was like that. So, and I wonder when Simon was walking with Jesus, like I said earlier, did he get a vibe or did Jesus give him, I guess, a, a read that, that this isn't right? I do wonder because how do you get that a read on a man who's, you know, bloodied and beaten up? If, if that even happened, it's just my head cannon. And please, I'd like to hear y'all's thoughts too, because I think this is a very unique story. There's none really quite like it, but that's usually how biblical stories go. But this story specifically, picking up your cross is such a common theme throughout all of Christianity. Galatians 6.2 tells us that we should carry each other's burdens. And in this way, we will fulfill the law of Christ. You know, the, the golden rule, the love your neighbor as yourself. This is that act in play. And when Simon was approaching Mount Calvary, was he carrying his burdens with him? Was, you know, just being in the presence of this all all powerful all man all deity just so transformative that you know he he was self-reflecting as he was walking with them as he was helping him get into the cross basically helping him to get murdered it must have been a short-lived journey but an incredible introspective and it comes to big the question are we prepared to carry our cross are we prepared to carry our burdens so close to jesus like simon did it's something I've always struggled with, but we should be like Simon, ready to serve Jesus no matter where we are randomly in a crowd. See you in the next video.